Hey everybody. Today we're going to get started approximating the area under a curve using rectangles. Coming into calculus, pretty much all of the area formulas we know are based on the formula for the area of a rectangle. Area equals length times width. And this is basically just the definition of area. For instance, a parallelogram can be cut up and sewn back together into a rectangle. That's where our formula for the area of a parallelogram comes from. And, of course, a triangle is just one half of a corresponding parallelogram. So that's where we get one half base times height from. The big exception is the area for the formula of a circle. And that one is generally just handed to us when we're in middle school, not really justified. So in calculus, we'd like to actually be able to justify that formula. More generally, we'd like to be able to compute areas for curved regions. We start in on this by looking at an important special case, the area under the graph of a function. So let's see an example of how we might go about this. Consider this region. It's bounded by the graph of y equals 2 minus 1 half x squared, the x-axis, and x equals negative 1 and positive 1. We can't compute the shaded area exactly right away. We don't, we don't know how to do curved regions just yet. So we're going to approximate it using rectangles. What we're going to do is to draw a bunch of rectangles sitting on the x-axis, and their heights are going to be determined by the y values of the function. So there's many different ways I could do this. Here, I've chosen to use four rectangles. I could have used more or less. I have chosen to make them all of equal width, here, one half. And I've chosen to take their heights to be determined by the value of the function at the right-hand endpoint of each of those subintervals. So the heights are going to be f of negative 0.5, f of 0, f of 0.5, and f of 1. So now that I've got these rectangles drawn, I can compute their areas and sum them up to get the area of the cross-hatched cross -hatched region, which is going to be a good approximation for the area of the shaded region that I'm actually trying to find. So I do base times height plus base times height plus base times height plus base times height. Notice that the widths are all the same, one half unit. So to save myself a little bit of work, I'm going to factor that out before I start simplifying anything. Now I plug those values into the function and simplify. I get that the crosshatched region has area 3.625. That's going to be an approximation of the shaded region we should be able to get a better estimate just by using more rectangles. For instance, let's repeat that process that we just did using eight rectangles instead of four. I'm going to continue to keep them all of the same width, so now their width is 0.25. And again, I'm going to take the height to be the value of the function at the right-hand endpoint of each of those small intervals. So the heights are going to be, for example, f of negative 0.75, f of negative 0.5, f of negative 2 point, f of negative 0.25, and so on. Notice that the widths are all the same, and so we can find that just by taking the total width of the interval, 2, and dividing it by the number of rectangles, 8. So the width of each of these rectangles is going to be 0.25. Let's write down a formula for the total cross-hatched area. It's going to be width times height plus width times height and so on. And the width is always the same, so I'm going to start now by factoring that out. I'm going to get 0.25, that's the width, times the sum of the values of the function at the right-hand endpoints of each of these little intervals. f of negative 0.75, f of negative 0.5, and so on. I plug in all those values, I simplify a little bit, and I get 3.656. This is a similar result as we got when n was 4, but this one should be more precise. OK, let's generalize the process. Let's suppose we want to estimate the area under the graph of a function y equals f of x on the interval a comma b using n rectangles and write endpoints. Since all of the rectangles are going to have equal width, the width of each is going to be given by the total width of the interval b minus a divided by the number of rectangles n. Let's, since we're going to be using this a lot in our formulas, let's give it a name. Let's call it delta x. Delta x equals b minus a over n. That's the width of each rectangle. 
then the right-hand endpoints of the rectangles are going to be a plus delta x, a plus 2 delta x, and so on. Start at the left-hand endpoint a, move over by the width of one rectangle, then move over by the width of another rectangle. These are the spots where you're going to want to measure the heights of the rectangles by plugging into the function. Notice that there are n values on this list because we're going to be making n rectangles. The number before the delta x indexes which rectangle you're on. a plus 1 delta x, a plus 2 delta x, and so on, corresponding to the first and second rectangle, and so on. Also notice that the last value, a plus n delta x, is just going to be b. And you can confirm that algebraically by plugging in b minus a over n for delta x in the last item in that list. Um, that makes sense. b is just the rightmost endpoint in the big interval. Then we can write down a formula for the area under the graph approximated using n rectangles and right-hand endpoints. We get f of a plus delta x plus f of a plus 2 delta x plus f of a plus 3 delta x, and so on. That whole quantity multiplied by delta x. So we're summing up the heights of all the rectangles and then multiplying that entire sum by the width of each rectangle. Now, I don't generally recommend memorizing a lot of formulas, but in particular here, this is not a formula that it's particularly important to memorize. It's a lot more important to remember the idea. Um, when I'm doing these problems in practice, I'm typically always drawing a picture, sketching the rectangles, and just literally computing the areas of those rectangles, rather than just plugging in blindly into this formula. Let's do an example from start to finish. Approximate the area under the graph of y equals 1 over x on the interval 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 4 using six rectangles and right-hand endpoints. So here's a graph showing the region whose area we're trying to approximate. The total width is going to be 3, 4 minus 1, and we have n equals 6 rectangles. So delta x, the width of each rectangle, is going to be 1 half. Let's actually draw in the rectangles. Again, I don't like to just blindly plug into that formula. I like to be able to see it geometrically and use this picture to my advantage. So let's actually compute areas of rectangles. I write 1 sixth for the width of, the, um, of, for the width of each of the rectangles. And then inside a bracket, I'm going to do the height of each rectangle. And I'm going to add all of those up. f of 1.5 plus f of 2 plus f of 2.5, and so on. Plugging in um, each of those values to 1 over x and simplifying a little bit, I get that the shaded region is going to be about 0.406.